In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to show three functions are linearly dependent on interval. In the previous video, I show you guys how to show two functions are linearly dependent or not. To do that for two functions, all you have to do is check if one function is a constant multiple of the other or not, right? But for three functions like this, we cannot just say this is a constant multiple of the other or things like that. It's not that straightforward anymore. And this is how we are going to do it. And for linearly dependence right here, okay, what we are going to do is we have to find three constants, C1, C2, and C3. And the condition on this constants is that they are not all zero. Sometimes one of them could be zero, right? Anyways, find C1, C2, C3 so that we have an answer to this. C1, Y1, plus C2, Y2, plus C3, Y3, this is equal to zero. We are going to make this happen, all right? So we have these three functions right here. They are all linear functions, and we hope this will work, right? So here we go. I'm just going to set this up for you guys. I will have the C1 times Y1, which is that. 2t minus 1, like this, right? And then we'll continue, we add it with c2 times the second function, which is t plus 5. And then the third one is plus c3 times that, c3 times 4t minus 7, and we make this equal to 0. And our goal is to, you know, give a combination of c1, c2, c3, present that for the answer. If we can make that happen, then we can say, these functions are linearly dependent, right? And C1, C2, C3, once again, the condition is that they are not all zero. And this is how we can do it. First of all, as you can see, we have to distribute C1 into the parentheses. That's what we can do, right? And we have linear terms in the parentheses. And we know we will distribute and we can just combine like terms. We will have the terms with T and then also just the number, just the constant terms, right? Let me just kind of combine the like terms for you guys. So I will do that. So that means I have t right here, and then this right here will be the coefficients of t. Let's see what we get. This is the first one. We have 2 times c1 times t. t is out already. So first case, we will have 2 times c1. And for the, from the second parentheses, we have c2 times t, but the t is out, so we'll say plus c2. And from the third parentheses, we will have c3 times 4, which is the same as plus 4c3, right? And we will add it with, now, just the constant terms. First, we have c1 times negative 1, which is negative c1, and let me just write it down like this for now. And next, we have 5 times c2, so plus 5c2. And lastly, we have negative 7 times c3, so it's minus 7c3, and this is equal to 0. And technically, I should put down parentheses right here. So you see, this right here is the terms with t, and I factor out t already, and this right here is just a constant term. On the right-hand side, I have 0, and now we are going to match coefficients. This is 0. Technically, you can look at this as 0t plus 0, if you like. That will tell us this right here, the coefficient right here altogether has to be this zero. Likewise, this constant right here altogether has to be this zero, right? So I will make this equal to zero. I will have to make this equal to zero. And from here, we can come up with a system of equations. First, let me just write it down. We will have 2c1 plus b2 plus 4c3 equal to zero. And next one, we have this minus c1 plus 5c2 and then minus 7c3 equals to 0, right? And as you can see, this is a system of equations. How many unknowns? Three of them. How many equations? Only two. So you're guaranteed to have solutions in this case. And in fact, infinitely many solutions, right? And you know you have solution to this because on the right-hand side, you have zero. Worst comes first, you know C1, C2, C3, they can always be zero, and then that will be true. But that defeats the purpose. I want to find C1, C2, C3, not all zero, to show you that these functions are LD, all right? 
and this is the algebra that we can do from here. But uh, yeah, let me just show you. First of all, we can get rid of the variable first. Uh, I see I have 2c1, and this is negative c1. Let me just go ahead and multiply the second equation by pass d2, so that I can get rid of c1, right? So in that case, we'll see this is 2c1 plus c2 plus 4c3, still equal to 0. Distribute the twos, we have minus 2c1 plus 10c2 minus 14c3 equals to 0, right? Just do that algebra, and combine, this will be gone. This right here is 11c2, this right here is minus 10c3, and this is equal to 0. And let me just add the 10c3 on both sides. So we have 11c2 equals to 10c3. Divide 11 on both sides, in another way we get c2 equals to 10 over 11c3, right? Right now, here is how you can come up with a uh, nice uh, answer for it. Whole number is better, right? Well, this right here, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say, I'm going to pick. Okay, you can choose any number that you want now, seriously. I'm going to pick, well, C2 is based on C3, so I'm going to pick C3 first. If I want to end up with whole numbers, I'm going to select C3 to be 11. Or 22, negative 11, negative 22, negative 55, any multiple of 11. Because when I have 11, or any constant multiple right here, I don't have to look at fractions anymore. So anyways, C3 is equal to 11, and in that case, you put in 11 here, you will see C2 will be 10 over 11 times C3, which is 11, which is, you know, you cross it out, you can say C2 is equal to 10. Isn't it? And at the end, don't forget to find C1 as well. We have C2 and C3 now. Come back here, pick either equation. Perhaps I will pick the top one. I'll use the first one. So I will say this is 2C1 plus C2, which is 10, and then plus 4, and the C3 is 11. Put an 11 like this. Make it equal to 11, make it equal to 0. <laughs> Anyways, so if this 2C1 is, uh, and then plus 10 plus 44 equals to 11, equals to 0. <laughs> Anyways, 2C1 e plus 54, right, equals to 0. 2C1 equals to negative 54. C1 equals to negative 27. So what I'm trying to show you is that when I pick C1 to be negative 27, if I put it here, and then I will put down 10 for C2, and I will put down 11 for C3, guess what? The entire left-hand side will be just as zero as the right-hand side. So I will show you guys that real quick, just to convince you. Put this there. I'll do it here real quick, right? Negative 27 times uh, 2t minus 1, and then c2 is 10, so plus 10 times that, t plus 5, and then c3 is 11, put it there, plus 11 times 4t minus 7. I'll show you this is equal to 0. So you see, distribute, you get negative 54t plus 27, this is plus 10t plus 50, and then plus 44t, and then minus 77, right? Okay, check this out. Negative 54t, this right here, plus 10t is together negative 44t, but you add a positive 44t right here. So guess what? This, this, that, all cancel, isn't it? And moreover, 27 plus 50 is 77, 77 minus 77, guess what? All together, we just have 0 because this right here cancel out with this. All together, 0 is equal to 0. So, checks. So, here's the deal. As long as you can find out one set of values for C1, C2, C3, and perhaps you can just write this down. You can just say, uh, we can say, we can pick 
C1 to be that, negative 27, and then C2 to be this, C3 to be 11. So you can just show me this C values, and perhaps you can do this. When you get 0 is equal to 0, guess what? You just show that these functions are linearly dependent by using the definition. Be sure you don't use, once again, be sure you don't use the wrong skin uh, to show linearly dependency for this case, right? Do not use wrong skin to show LD. Only use wrong skin to show LI. And I'll demonstrate in the next video. Anyways, that's it.